My name is Dr. Jason Marshall. I'm the laboratory director at the Toxics Use Reduction Institute at the University of Massachusetts, Lowell. The Turi Laboratory was established to evaluate and identify safer, greener cleaning products. And what the lab does here is we evaluate the performance of how well they work. Because not only do they have to be green, but you want them to work. And that's what we do here in the lab. We evaluate using standardized methodology that can be reproduced in other laboratories. We work with the manufacturers of these products and we find out what they're what they're designed their products to do, and we'll set up testing methodologies based on those soils and the surfaces that they're trying to clean. We can test it, provide to them a third-party verification of the performance of their products. That way they can use scientific information instead of using anecdotal information from end users that are out there to say, oh yeah, we, love, we use this product, it's great. For those companies who are looking for hard, fast numbers, that's what we can provide to them is saying, and this is tested under laboratory conditions and these are the results we found. Most of the testing that we deal with, we use coupons, which are materials that are representative of what, we're, what you're trying to clean. So it can be a ceramic piece of material, or it can be glass coupons, it can be stainless steel. And what we do is we artificially contaminate those surfaces using soils that are representative of what you're trying to clean. And we do a gravimetric analysis where we weigh it before and after. That way you can get an idea of how much soil you start with and then how much you remove after cleaning. And then you can get an efficiency for the removal of that soil. Instead of doing a manual cleaning where you have a person come in and scrub it themselves, we have a machine that's set up to do that type of testing for us, so it eliminates the human elbow grease in the cleaning application. So instead of someone scrubbing a little bit harder, we have the machine that will do a consistent amount of force onto the surface cleaning the coupons. We do our testing in triplicate where we have three coupons of the same substrate with the soil on it, and we'll weigh them, put them on the balance, and we'll get the numbers and we'll record the initial weights. We'll go and we'll put the soil on and then we'll weigh them again and we'll get an idea how much soil we've added to the surface. And then we go and we take those and we clean them and then we come back after they're dry and we weigh them a third time. And that way we can get a percent removal of the soil. So instead of saying, yeah, it looked like it removed most of it, we can say it removed 75% of the soil or 76% of the soil. And it gives the, the end users or the manufacturers that hard, fast number that they're looking for as opposed to saying, yeah, it looked good. And then we can say, you know, it removed 85% of the soil, so it was considered to be very effective. We take color readings of that surface to get an idea of how much is on there using the spectro guide, the handheld device that measures light in as well as contrast with colors. So we can get an idea of how well it removes the soil before and after. So what we'll do is we take the baseline level, take the readings, we take five samples, we move on to the next. Next, we do, again, triplicate, where we have the three different stains of the same soil. Take five readings per sample. And then we'll go and we'll clean the sample, and, and you can com compare the results of the SpectroGuide measurements to determine how well it worked. And one of the testing methodology that we have performed recently is to determine how well automatic dishwashing liquids work. And so what we'll do is we, there's a methodology that describes a soil that's using butter and milk products mixed together, and you put them on, onto the plate surfaces, you load the machine with the glassware on the top, you clean it, run it through the cycle, and you basically evaluate it for spotting that's left behind on the surface and you compare one product load to another to see how well it's stacked up. The one th modification that we've done to that methodology is we introduce similar substrates, again, using the coupons. We'll use ceramic, we'll use stainless steel, and we'll use glass coupons. So we can do a more quantitative assessment as, 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 as opposed to the qualitative assessment using l looking at the spots where we can weigh coupons before and after and get a percent removal using the same type of substrates. That way you get an idea how well your cleaning product will work in the real wor world situation as opposed to just saying, oh yeah, that looks like it's clean. In some situations, we may not necessarily be able to do a gravimetric analysis before and after. All is not lost. What we do is we evaluate using a, a panel of three or four people and we do a visual inspection of the surface. We know what, the, what we started with, we know how dirty it was after we put the soil on, and then we know where we ended up when we were cleaned. And one way to, uh, to improve that is we also take pictures of the, of the surfaces or the parts of, that we're trying to clean. So we have a baseline to go back to if we're not quite sure what it looked like when it was dirty. So the reason why we do more than one person is that some, some people may evaluate a little bit differently in this way we can get an average comparison of, of what would happen during the cleaning process. We also can measure for surface conditions. Basically measures coefficient of friction. It allows you to determine if there's any kind of residue left on the surface. If you take your baseline measurements of an untreated surface, you know where you're starting from. You apply the cleaning solution on there and remove it off, and then you measure again to see what types of residue is left behind on the surface. 
Ideally, you would want to return back to the original surface conditions. If there's a residue left behind there, you can either make the coefficient go lower, which would be slipperier, a little more like an ice skating rink, or it can make it stickier like a basketball court where you hear the squeaking sound, you know that there's more friction involved there. So ideally, you want to get back to where you started from, and this will allow us to determine how much residue is left on the surface using that kind of measurement.